Good afternoon, my name is Jim Conlon and welcome to latest episode of our entertainment show. As you know, in part three of our entertainment show each week, we premiere new TV series and movies that are debuting here in Ireland and the UK, and especially here in Ireland with Irish interests. And one of the popular... T t uh... Ted is gone. Good afternoon, my name is Jim Conlon and welcome to the latest episode of our entertainment show. As you know, in part three of our entertainment show each week, we premiere a new TV series or movie that is debuting here in Ireland and the UK, and especially with Irish interests. And up for discussion this week is a TV series that has been running on our stations here for the last month or so on channel Apple TV right across Ireland and the UK, and especially here in Ireland. It's called Shrinking, and it deals with a grieving therapist uh, who starts to tell the clients what he really believes in terms of the truth and defying his sort of training and ethics. And this features an all-star cast, including Jason Segal, uh, Jason Siegel, uh, Harrison Ford, uh, Krista Miller, Luke Tenney, Michael Urey, and our special guest this evening, the one and only Ted McGinley. If you ever think to yourself that's a familiar sort of name, Ted McGinley, yes, indeed it is. Uh, Ted McGinley, famously known from appearing in Wayne's World, Revenge of the Nerds, Pearl Harbor, Daybreak, and most importantly, that you might know him from as Jefferson Darcy mm -hmm. in the one and only Married with Children. Ted McGinley plays the role of Derek in Shrinking, and uh, Ted's to be back in a popular sort of TV series again, a comedy series. Uh, you're so accustomed to that sort of role. How excited are you to be lining up beside Jason Segel and Harrison Ford? Yeah, I, yeah, luckiest guy in America for sure. Uh, yeah, I'm beside myself. It's one of those dream jobs. You know, I mean, I, I for years I just wanted to meet Harrison Ford, like just be in a room with him. And now, you know, we're sharing a stage together. It's phenomenal. Like I, it blows my mind. Jason Siegel, one of the nicest uh, creative minds that I've ever met and, and funny and sweet and kind. It's just a great, great gig. I'm so proud to be a part of the show. And I didn't realize it was in Ireland now. So I haven't heard anything like, how's it going over there? Are they enjoying it? Yes, it's good. We've actually, uh, we're into the fourth episode here in Ireland. Uh, it sort okay. of debuted here. So it's running for the last uh, sort of month or so uh, here, Ted. And Ted, I got to ask you, appearing in a TV series, the very first one, Fantasy Island, back in 1982, to be appearing in a TV series almost like 40 years sort of later, uh, dare I say, uh, does it almost fill you with the sort of same excitement as it was uh, as a young boy, uh, young kid uh, appearing in Fantasy Island all back those years ago? Yeah, it's a good question, actually. And it was 1980. I got Isn't happy days okay, in 1980. Uh, <laughs> but we started work probably in 81. But I, I, um, I was so afraid in those days. I was so... I hadn't any training. I didn't belong with these people who were massive professionals. And uh, so I spent most of my time just trying to survive. And now it's so much more fun because I come loaded with, you know, many years of experience and, and I, I enjoy uh, the challenge. I still love the challenge of trying to do good work. Hmm. And I yeah, continue. Is so smart. Sorry, shrinking is is so smart that uh, it's the smartest show I've ever been on. The writers have created these brilliant, complicated, interesting characters, and uh, I, I happen to be one of them. And you don't know yet. You know, by the way, as you as the season plays out, you'll see Derek has a little more to do as it goes. But uh, it's been a dream come true. 
And Ted, you've been uh, offered so many roles uh, throughout your life in terms of so series, in terms of movies, and probably projects that you've turned down as well uh, throughout the years. Uh, were you a sort of approach for this role of Derek uh, in terms of, the, the, were you sought out for this sort of role? Did someone had you in mind when they were creating for this role or was it the normal talent agents process, uh, audition sort of process? Yeah, no, this one, uh, Bill Lawrence and I have tried to work together uh, for, I actually tested for the TV show Scrubs. Okay. For, for the John McGinley character, the one that John McGinley got. So the two McGinley boys were the two people who tested for that show, and I didn't get it. John got it. Uh, but at least McGinley was going to get it. So that was good. Uh, but I, I, so Bill and I have been trying, he's tried to hire me a few times uh, to do shows of his. And uh, for one reason or another, it'll get to the studio or the network and, and it didn't work. So um, he said to me, listen, trust me, I, we're going to work together. And then this showed up and it was a godsend. I mean, this is you know, I'm I'm just really fortunate to be a part of it. And uh, Ted, did you know Harrison Ford and Jason Segal were attached when they brought this uh, concept to you, this character? Were they already attached at that stage? And obviously, if they were, that probably made the decision a lot more easier for you. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, they were attached. And, and uh, I, I thought it was a practical joke. Like, there's no way you want me to work with Harrison Ford and Jason Segel? Uh, and I could just show up and do this? I don't have to jump through it. Yeah, uh, okay. Where do I sign and how quickly can I get to your house to do it? Yeah, it was crazy. I mean, I was, it was a dream come true. They were attached and I couldn't believe that I would be, I, you know, I'm still, I still can't believe it. And uh, Ted, in terms of your wife, uh, in terms of your, in, in terms of uh, shrinking, uh, the one and only Krista Miller, uh, played by Liz, uh, is your wife in this. Obviously, you mentioned the character, Derek. What's their sort of relationship? I know Liz often babysits uh, for Jason, but uh, behind closed doors, have they sort of a strenuous uh, relationship? This is uh, is this as as quirky as the Darcy's. <laughs> well. I would say uh, that the relationship between Derek and Liz is very honest. Mm -hmm. So they have, they have, a, it may appear as if she's, you know, she's sort of pushing him off to the side, but the truth is Derek doesn't mind. Derek has a full life and uh, Derek doesn't mind not being invited. Uh, but Derek and Liz have a, have a very honest relationship. They can say things to each other that uh, most couples can't. And they say it and they, they love each other for it. They have a very cool relationship. And I think it's actually kind of like uh, Bill and Krista's real relationship. I mean, they have an amazing relationship when you watch it. And uh, I think a part of that sneaks into, into this, these two characters. Uh, but, you know, Derek is a guy who's, trying to find holes in his life, trying to make time to do nothing. Liz, is a her character is trying to fill all the holes that she now has. So we're kind of working in opposite directions. Is Derek uh, going through a midlife crisis? Uh, Derek is not. No, not yet. Derek is looking forward to trying to go through one. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> uh, Derek, you know, Derek is really easy going. And uh, he, if you notice, like Derek doesn't really have any of the problems that a lot of the other characters have. Hmm. He's figured out how to navigate the seas pretty steady. And, and uh, it's sort of like, that's, that's where he's sort of like me, where he, he's more than happy not to be seen. Hmm. Uh, just goes through his life. He doesn't need a whole lot. And I suppose, John, in terms of the production now on set for Shrinking, uh, in terms of that, in terms of season one now, you had uh, roughly uh, 10, 10 sort of episodes. I know season two is uh, in the pipeline and the works at the moment. Uh, what was it sort of like in terms of the studio lock? Was it maybe, 
were you there to treat three to four months in terms of production in terms of and obviously for you was was it maybe you were needed on set maybe three out of the six or seven days of the week in terms of yeah, shooting? It's per- yeah it's a perfect job it's a perfect job right so you probably for me so we spend half of the time at warner brothers studios in what we call the valley and in, in where all the studios are a lot of the studios are and then um the other part was actually in the homes out in altadena out by where the rose bowl is okay and uh and so from where i live i live at the beach that's like i might as well be driving to mars uh and in la it we have traffic like you can't imagine so if you have an afternoon call all the way out in altadena which is an hour away then you know i'm i might as well leave in the morning and go sit in my trailer uh you know it's a it was those were really the two spots of where we filmed going to the studio was super fun because there's nothing cooler than to get to drive especially if you're a guy who's when you audition they make you walk from 20 miles away you're so unimportant you're always in somebody's way they have to check you out to get through when you're on a show you get to drive right through the gate you got your own spot it it's it feels so good and then when we go out to to uh, the houses out in Altadena, the neighborhood, I think <laughs> we had two houses side by side. And I think the neighbors were ready for us to to get out. Uh, but we've now created those homes on a set. So I imagine that's what we'll do. I have no idea. You, you know, they surprise you all the time. So who knows? But this, the, being on set with, I mean, you know, Harrison Ford has a he has a, a golf cart uh, that he cruises around and he has his own mountain bike that he rides around. And so does uh, Jason Siegel and um, Lukita has her surfboards on top. She surfs every day. She's got her surfboard rack up on top of her car. And, you know, it's fun to be around these people. They're interesting. Mm-hmm. They're fun. And uh, it's a it's just such a unique group of people and uh, Ted do you like uh, obviously uh, projects that come your way in terms of pipeline obviously you've signed on to to shrinking uh, in terms of that do you almost feel like that sort of that sort of niche has been sort of met by you now that you're back in a tv series where you feel homely where you feel sort of belong belonging sort of too so you're maybe looking at maybe sporadic sort of projects along the side in terms of guest appearances and other sort of projects and i do believe you're writing a, a movie at the moment yeah i so i i produced a movie which we okay, finished which is- and i didn't write it i uh but i produced it with some friends and i starred in it um and and so it worked out perfect. As soon as we finished Shrinking, I went into two other films uh, right away. So the great thing about doing 10, 10 episodes, and that's why so many, you see guys like Harrison Ford doing it, is that they it's, it's four months, maybe four and a half months or five months of work, and then you're free to go do whatever you want to do. It works out really well. It could be uh for, so you see a lot of movie stars you see a lot of people doing this kind of thing now and and f- for me it's like it's ideal it's just it, i think married with children we probably work nine months out of the year and on a show like shrinking you probably do five months out of the year mm, so uh, uh it, it's a much you have a much greater time span to get other work done or just to relax and enjoy your family or travel go to ireland and I do believe you have been in Ireland, uh, Ted, uh, to sampling in the Irish golf courses and sampling our own sports here in terms of oh. hurling and Gaelic football. Yes, it's exactly right. We uh, one of my sons is a was a collegiate golfer, and so uh, they were playing throughout Ireland. It was spectacular. We went and watched, and uh, and then on days where they weren't playing or whatnot, we would just go. Travel. Now, I've been to Ireland before. I took my mom and dad many years ago, and we went up to Glen Cullum Keel, where we're from, and there's a Catholic church there on the on the water, and when you go into the yard there, there's they're all McGinley's in the graveyard on the grounds, 
And it was, I'd never, you know, I've never even met another McGinley in, in, in the United States. So to see that was really grounding and, and super impressive. And I know the folks in Ireland are tired of all of us coming back and saying, yeah, we're from here. But uh, it, it makes you feel really connected to that little piece of land. And it, it's, it's pretty special. Uh, and, and then the golf courses there are amazing. And that's a massive pilgrimage, a rite of passage here if you're a golfer to go there and play. And, and so I'm, I'm, I'm constantly trying to let, get my wife to let me go with some buddies and play, <laughs> play there. But it was so cold and windy. I, I mean, I couldn't even get, it was windy, it was so windy that I don't think my ball would even reach the fairway from the tee box. Because uh, I watched some really good scratch golfers barely get it to the fairway. So, but, and the caddies are walking around in shorts. Yeah. So, uh, you know, the, you Irish are tough. But I, I want to come in and I, I'd love to come in and do it live. That way I can write my trip off, stop by and see you. No problem, uh, Ted. Uh, Ted, before we finish up and before we start to the final 30 seconds of promo uh, shrinking, I got to ask you, do you miss the 80s? Do you miss Married with Children? Do you miss that sort of time in TV? You did pop, probably a popular TV show. You, you'd stretch the boundaries. And what you did, obviously, you probably wouldn't get away with in terms of TV again. There will probably be never a series yeah. like it again. It caused so much anticipation so much hype it sort of caused it divided a nation some of the storylines in terms of aggro yeah. what happened and uh to sort of look back and sort of those years and you think to yourself there's some fantastic memories there's some great times and you think to yourself do you close your eyes sometimes and do you go back there or do you think to yourself well that's that's history now let's leave it sort of there or just do you miss it in a way Tim? well i miss the people I miss all the casts that I've worked with. I miss I miss that relationship because uh, everybody just moves on and, and you always think you're going to stay together, but it life just comes at you and, and you often don't. So I miss that part of it, but I'm not a guy ever who looks back. I, I never live backwards, uh, almost to a fault. I, I like going forward. I love what's coming. I'm more excited about what's ahead of me than what was behind me. And, and I love all those shows. Like when I, you know, I think about Happy Days, my very first show, I learned, that was my university. That's where I learned kind of what comedy, timing, rhythms, uh, how to be respectful on a stage. You know, all of those things I learned from that cast. They were so uh, professional and-, and um, I suppose Henry Winkler would leave his mark on anyone. He what? I suppose Henry Winkler, uh, such an expert pro, he'd leave his mark on anyone in terms of learning from him. Yeah, you're, and what I learned from Henry really was, I mean, many things, but he's so good with large groups of people that would, wherever you go with Henry, large groups of people would come at him. And uh, I watched him navigate his way through it. And it was, I mean, that was probably what I learned from him more than anything was sort of, treating everybody with respect, but still accomplishing what you have to accomplish. And then, and then um, letting everybody know how much you appreciate them being there, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, Henry's just a master at that. And of course, you know, I mean, again, I, I was, I was a guy who was watching that show on television and then literally a week later I was on it. No training, no nothing. And so thank God they were generous enough to let me just sit there and learn. And it was, it was a miracle. So, yeah, I mean, I owe a lot. Like when I think back on those days for years, I didn't because it was hard. I, I didn't feel like I had done a very good job, but now I realize like I was thrown to the wolves. Like the, my education really started once I started working uh, in the business. And so I did it backwards. Um, and then I started doing comedy improv work and I met Sam Kennison, which later led to Married with Children. Uh, you know, so I had a lot of uh, my whole, just the whole process was uniquely different. 
but I'm a guy who wants to go forward. I'm a guy who's always thinking, what's tomorrow? And uh, who can I bring with me? And tomorrow is very bright in the world of uh, Ted McKinley. Uh, Ted McKinley, now for the final 30 seconds, you might enlighten all our audience, all our listeners, why they should continue watching Shrinking here on Channel Apple TV in Ireland to watch your character, Derek. And uh, we're, we're, we're going into the second half now of season one. Uh, what's in store for them, uh, Ted McKinley? Well, I will say it has. it's really worth the journey. you got to stick, stick with it from one to ten. 10 will pay off in a big way. Uh, each one of these characters develop more and more. You'll see more of Derek. He gets uh, a little more to do in all of these shows. Uh, and I think it. I think Apple TV has created the smartest, most interesting show on television, most inclusive and uh, incredibly brilliant. And, and I, I would watch it just for that reason alone. Let alone, you got Harrison Ford, Jason Siegel, Kristen Miller. I mean, come on. What's wrong with you guys? Watch it. <laughs> on that note, uh, Ted McGinley from me, Jim Conlon to you. Uh, Ted, stay safe. Take care. All the best uh, with uh, shrinking uh, in terms of season two. Obviously, do come back to Ireland again in the near future. We'd love to have you back, uh, no doubt. And uh, best of luck producing uh, your movie uh, in the near coming future. We're looking forward to that. Hopefully it gets distribu distributed over here in Ireland, in the UK, and we'll get to see that in our TV screens. But for the moment, Ted McKinley, stay safe, take care. And for me, Jim Conlon, God bless. Big Jim, thank you, buddy.